topic for discussion now is inflammation. <clears throat> As we all know, inflammation is actually a protective tissue response to injury or destruction of tissues, which will serve to destroy, dilute, or you know, it will actually wall off both injurious agents and also the injured injured tissues. So it it is something like a protective mechanism. It is actually acting like a wall between. Uh, the in, either the injurious agent or also for the injured tissue to actually heal faster. Okay. Normally, there are certain cardinal signs of inflammation, which includes rubber, calor, duber, and uh, you know uh, tumor, and also functionally say corneal celsus is the one who actually gave this uh, uh, you know the, the cardinal signs of inflammation, the four cardinal signs. Later, the functionally say was actually added. Rubber is nothing but redness, and tumor is nothing but the swelling. Uh, we have dollar. Dollar is nothing but uh, the pain, and also calor is increased uh, temperature. That is difference in temperature. It is actually in case of inflammation, there will be increased temperature. Function we say is nothing but there is something like loss of function. Next there is something called as triple response or red line response of Lewis, which was given by Lewis actually. This triple response or red line response is nothing but when we actually scratch uh, with a sharp instrument or a blunt uh, instrument or a thin sharp instrument on the skin, they will actually see triple response, that is three responses. Initially there will be a red line which will later enlarge, that means slight enlargement of the red line will be seen. Later there will be, it will be surrounded by a mild redness with a uh, mild uh, swelling. This is nothing but wheel. So initially there will be a red line which will flare followed by a wheel. This is nothing but triple response or red line response which actually indicates inflammatory process. Now coming to inflammation, it is actually classified into two types. That is acute inflammation and chronic inflammation. Acute inflammation is actually something like an immediate or early response to an injurious agent. It will usually act between four minutes to days and polymorph uh, the main uh, ingredient, uh, the main uh, cell, the cell uh, which is, can be seen in case of acute inflammation is polymorphonuclear cells. It is actually characterized by fluid and protein that is exudate of uh, which is actually having specific gravity which is greater than 1.020. Next, chronic inflammation is of prolonged duration in which there will be active inflammation, tissue destruction and there will be attempts at repair which is proceeding simultaneously. In this chronic inflammation can last up to from few weeks to years and lymphocytes and macrophages that is mononuclear cells are the cells that have been usually seen in these cases. And we have something called as inflammatory process. This inflammatory process actually follows a uh, stepwise uh, action. The first one is whenever there is a direct injury or uh, injury then or uh, now because of an indirect injury due to noxious stimuli etc. What happens is the mass cells are attracted there which will actually detect the injury uh, to the nearby cells and this will release histamine. This histamine is something which will actually initiate the inflammatory response. Once the histamine actually increases in the blood, uh, blood flow, it will reach the own site and it will bring in the phagocytosis and other immune cells to that area. Okay, this will neutralize the pathogens. The blood influx will cause the wound to swell, to redden and also to become warm and painful. Okay, there is an inflammatory class K where there is an infection or an injury, the cell membrane is disrupted, right? There is a breach on the cell membrane, a breach on the epithelium, thus that thing but the breach of the cell membrane. This will cause, this will actually activate the phospholipids there. There is something called as phospholipase inhibition usually occurring. This phospholipids convert into arachidonic acid. This and, and they actually enter into two different pathways. One is lipoxysinase in um, pathway and another is cyclooxygenase pathway. In lipoxysinase pathway, we have inflammatory mediators that are produced like leukotrains. In cyclooxygenase pathway, we have prostaglandins and thromboxygenase. Now coming to acute inflammation. Acute inflammation usually it will have uh, certain mediators for host defense. The primary cellular mediators are leukocytes which are neutrophils and plasma proteins. These are actually taken or these are actually attracted to the site of the injury. The two major components that are actually acting on this acute inflammation. One we have cellular events and vascular events where vascular ch changes precede the cellular changes. In vascular changes what happens is immediately after an injury there is change in the vascular caliber or flow. That means first there will be a transient or momentary vasoconstriction which will actually last for few seconds. This is because 
it is an automatic body response to actually stop excessive blood loss. However, it is momentary and later which is followed by vasodilatation. After this vasodilation, there will be increased capillary permeability. So in vascular changes, we have something called as response triplet. Response triplet is nothing but momentary vasoconstriction followed by vasodilatation and which is again followed by increased capillary permeability. This increased vascular, uh, capillar, vascular permeability can further lead to exudation and edema. Now coming to mechanisms of this increased vascular permeability, whenever there is a direct injury, what happens is the endothelial cells will contract. Once the endothelial cell contraction happens, there will be something called as endothelial cell retraction leading to, uh, this will, in the case of this endothelial cell retraction, what happens is there will be leaky endothelial surface, leaky endothelial wall. That means it will, it is allowing the intravascular fluid to move into extra cellular spaces, into the extravascular spaces and then followed by a direct endothelial injury. After a direct endothelial injury, what happens? The endothelial injury can be through polymorphonucleosides also. This will actually cause leakage or increased vascular permeability. That is, there will be gaps between your endothelial cells or finally the endothelial cell itself is being killed. Next, we have something leukocyte dependent endothelial cell injury. Then in after that, we have increased transcytosis and leakage from new blood vessels. Now coming to leukocyte cellular events, in leukocyte cellular events we have various phases. Initially we have margination and rolling. In this margination and rolling phase what happens is there will be RBCs which actually fall coils in the middle of the blood, blood vessel. Okay. After this what happens is the WBCs especially the granulocytes will actually uh, you know are uh, marginated are pushed towards the wall of the blood vessel. Later, there is something called as addition and transmigration. In this, what happens is this granulocytes uh, which have been pushed towards the vascular wall will start ethering to the epithelium. In this ethering, what happens is pav pavementing is a feature that we actually see in this phase. Next one is chemotaxis. In chemotaxis, what happens? There will be migration of the cells to the target region. Maybe the mast cells, maybe the polymorphonucleosides, whatever are the cells, they actually migrate to your target region. Then, then the activation of these cells actually happen. In after this phase, what happens? There is something called as opsonization. Once the cells, once the chemotaxis factor is happening, what happens is there is something called as opsonization where the antigens are coated, okay, for antibodies to go and attack them. Okay, this is nothing but uh, opsonization. After this opsonization, what happens? Phagocytosis occur. Phagocytosis is nothing but engulfing of the pathogen leading to degranulation or killing of the cell. So this is how the leukocyte cellular features actually happen. Next, we have some uh, chemotactic factors. These chemotactic factors include uh, your complement components. We have arachidonic acid metabolites like leukotrienes. We have chemokines. We have cytokines like uh, interleukin-8. And we have various soluble bacterial proteins. And there is something called as complement system, which has an important role in immunity. And these complement systems of various types, we have C59 complex, where a membrane attack complex, which is nothing but MAC C59, there will actually... It, what it does is it punches a hole within a membrane and in role of inflammation also we have this complement uh, action. In complement actions like C3 and C5B, they actually have a very good role in uh, inflammation. They activate lipoxygenase pathway, they activate leukocytes, they, result, they help in addition, they help in chemotaxis, they help in phagocytosis and C3B also acts as an opsonin. I told you about opsonization, right? They actually help in opsonin, act as an opsonin and they promote phagocytosis. Next is we have various chemical mediators of inflammation and these chemical mediators can be either plasma derived or cell derived. The plasma derived chemical mediators include circulating precursors that have to be activated like complements, kinins, coagulation factors and we have cell derived which are nothing but your sequestrate uh, in the, within the intracellular granules like histamine or prostaglandins. A cell derived mediators include preformed mediators or newly synthesized one. What are the preformed mediators? We have histamine, serotonin, neuropeptides and substance P. Whereas newly synthesized one includes prostaglandins, leukotrienes, platelet activating factors, activated oxygen species and nitric oxide. Now arachidonic acid pathways are as I told you. There are two pathways. We have lipoxygenase pathway and cyclooxygenase pathway. In lipoxygenase pathway, the important uh, chemicals that are present are 5-HETE, which is action uh, chemotaxis, 
by HPETE which will act in leukotriene generation and leukotrienes which will actually help which are the final product will actually help in vasoconstriction in bronchospasm and increased vascular permeability and this cyclooxygenase pathway which will have the end products like prostaglandins, prostacyclins and thromboxin A2 which will act as chemical mediators of inflammation. Now once there is an acute inflammation what could be the outcome? First thing it can resolve, resolve. so resolution is one of the outcome. Later sometimes it doesn't resolve what happens it can lead to acute abscess formation. There is I already told in inflammatory process we have a phase of exudation right. So this exudate material will be collected like in the localized collection of pus will lead to abscess formation. Sometimes there can be fibrosis in the process of healing and there will be if this acute inflammation is not treated properly it can move into chronic inflammation. So now chronic inflammation, in coming to chronic inflammation it is because of infiltration of mononuclear cells like macrophages, lymphocytes and plasma cells. What are the key macrophage events? We have recruitment from circulation, local proliferation and then this will cause immobilization and differentiation. Okay, these are the features which will actually act, are responsible for key macrophage events. Phagocytosis is one of the most important or key event of this macrophage system. We have various etiological agents for causing this chronic uh, inflammation. One is long term infections like tubercular bacillary infection. Tuberculosis is a chronic inflammatory condition. We have long term exposure to potential toxic agents like either exogenous or endogenous agents. Autoimmunity is also one of the most important etiological agent for chronic inflammation. Coming to classification, we have histological and morphological classification. In histological classification, it is chronic non-specific inflammation where we actually doesn't know what is the cause for inflammation can be mucosal lesions and ulcers and chronic granulomatous inflammations which include tuberculosis and syphilis. Coming to the morphological variants of this inflammation based upon the content we have various uh, classification one is serous inflammation which the final end product is a serous fluid where there will be blisters or uh, you know uh, uh, vesicles which are uh, filled with serous material. Fibrinous inflammation, inflammation where the end product is you know fibrinous uh, kind of material where there is fibrosis which is as the sequelae of it. Separative inflammation, inflammatory process leading to exudative uh, lesion where there is separation or pus discharge and ulceration. That inflammation can finally land into ulceration. So these are various morphological variants of how an inflammation can manifest. Coming to features of inflammation, mononuclear cell infiltration can be seen, tissue destruction can be seen and with the help of connective tissue replacement, healing process can also happen. Now coming to the mechanism of chronic inflammation, first there will be activation of lymphocytes, then there will be interaction of macrophage phagocytic system, tissue destruction which is pro followed by proliferative changes. The other form of chronic infl inflammation is granulomatous inflammation. This granulomatous inflammation is nothing but focal accumulation of activated macrophages which will result in epithelioid appearance. These granulomas are formed which are of two types one is foreign body granuloma or immune granulomas and uh, uh, in foreign body granulomas it could be because of any suture material which has been left over or it is because of any uh, you know uh, ingestion or which is because of entrapment of any foreign materials that can lead to any granulomatous inflammation. Immune granulomas we have various uh, granulomatous diseases like sarcoidosis we have tuberculosis we, even these conditions can also transform into, I mean they have the characteristic granuloma as a characteristic lesion, okay. And Jane cells are usually seen in these cases of uh, granuloma uh, conditions, okay. In granulomatous inflammations, Jane cells are one of the characteristic cellular features. Now coming to the applied aspects, usually the local effects of inflammation could be edema. Edema because of leakage of the intravascular fluid into extracellular spaces resulting in edema. Exudate is because of leukocytic migration and transudate can also be seen because of, you know, as an escape of fluid from the, uh, cap because of capillary, increased capillary permeability. And inflammation of oral tissues, we have many inflammatory lesions of oral cavity. Coming to dental lesions itself, we have pulpal inflammations which has chronic reversible or chronic irreversible pulpitis. Itis is nothing but inflammation. Periapical lesions like uh, apical periodontitis can be seen. Periodontal inflammations leading to uh, generalized periodontitis or localized periodontitis. It could be either, you know, uh, aggressive periodontitis also in some cases where the periodontium of the tooth is inflamed in these conditions. We have various soft tissue inflammatory lesions which will include, you know, from right from a small traumatic ulcer 
to lichen planus, we have various inflammatory lesions. And granulomatous inflammations are usually most commonly seen in case of tuberculosis, in syphilis, syphilitic gamma, and uh, in case of leprosy, cat scratch disease. Some of the examples include cystosomiasis, sarcoidosis, periliosis, silicosis, and any foreign body granulomas which are usually caused because of entrapment of any subsure material, etc. So this is about various uh, uh, I mean, various inflammatory diseases, and we have also seen about the uh, pathogenesis of how inflammation will occur.